I was five years old, and at uh, six o'clock in the morning, I was in the bed, and we started hearing banging on the door really hard, and they started screaming. Where they came in like with the guns and everything. My father was shocked. What's what happened? And then they went through his bed and said, Mordechai, you're under arrest. And it was, was right from our window. We were able to look down and see him with the handcuffs. Everyone was shocked and traumatized of what, ha what happened to us. From one day to the other, we had a beautiful family. Everyone was happy. And then all of a sudden, the sky fell down on us. And as a child, I didn't know what's going on, what happened. But my mother, she came into the room and she started uh, singing a song of Amuna with the, with the children. She didn't even cry. She said everyone, Hashem does it, Hashem does it. Remember, Hashem is the one who does it. Even my friends in school would tell me, you know, you know, you know I know what your father did, I know what your father did. My mother told me, no, you should know your father is a tzaddik and Hashem will help. And she never even shed a tear in front of us. But I saw the tears, the flowing tears, when she used to come out from there. She used to tell me, you know what? I raised a house of children. The smallest was, I think, 18 months and she was alone. It's unbelievable how the same person was so much broken inside, but so powerful and such, a, and, and not just a mother, but she was a mother and a father together. Shabbos, by the table in the middle, she used to say, one second children, I'm coming right away out. She used to go in her room, sit there. But after years, the kids, they were very curious to find out why she always goes in the room and locks the door. They back down and peeked in, they saw the mother crying. Then they realized what she's really suffering. Honestly, I didn't even know what means a father because you know, I was like five years old. I remember of my father very little things then. I don't even remember what means a Shabbos dish with a father. I don't even remember what means a Yom Tov with a father. I don't even know a simple thing that means what means to walk with your father in Shul. I never had such an experience because I was five years old and, and my two younger brothers, I was five, he was four, and, and the younger one was uh, two and a half years. Then when it came to my bar mitzvah, I was like, what can I do to make my father come to my bar mitzvah? I, was, I felt like all my friends have their father and I, I also want him. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. We tried to, to ask on him and, and I went actually to my bar mitzvah without him. Imagine a wife who has to make all arrangements for a wedding all on her own and raise all these children all on her own. So this has been a tremendous tragedy on this family and the strength that they have to have endured all this is absolutely superhuman. I always tell my father I have as a chis to be a child of yours and my mother as well. I, I feel so proud and I feel I don't know why Hashem gave me this treasure to be your children. I got to know a man who was not only extremely religious but to him, at least of equal importance, he loved his fellow Jews and he wanted to bring them together. He gave us a few little gifts. On Purim we got all sorts of little goodies. On Hanukkah we, we had a few extra things. At Rosh Hashanah he tried to give us an atmosphere of togetherness. And he's now at a point, after serving these 19 years, where the other inmates, and specifically the other Jewish inmates, really look up to him as a leader and as a counselor and a guide. And so we've seen actually a transformation of Mr. Samet, who came into the system really more focused on himself and is now really focused on everyone else around him. He, he's a tzaddik, I can't even tell you. He told me, I'm crying, but I'm crying to Hashem, not to people. He's giving us people. to my wedding and I went to my father I said Tati please tell me what can I do I want you to be at my chasana he told me go over to Rabbi Niederman tell him my name is Shlomi Samet and I want my father to come to my chasana do whatever you can and I just did that a week after that Rabbi Niederman calls me I just got an email from the warden that it's approved right away I screamed to my mother she was in the kitchen I said mommy Tati is coming to the chasana she said no I don't believe you it was the first time that he was 
were let, let out from, from prison. It was, it was unbelievable. My father danced with the Shtraimel and Bekicha, normal. It's the first time in years that my family felt that it, it can happen that my father should be with us. It was the first time that I experienced that feeling of sitting together with the father at one table. I was asked uh, by Natan Friedman to help him, in this case, to try to get Mr. Samet transferred to Israel. He was a resident of the United States, but a citizen of Israel. And there exists a treaty, the Transfer of Offender Treaty. And both Israel and the United States signed on to it, and it permits citizens who are in prison in another country to finish their sentence back in their home country. However, the U.S. government decided, based on a lack of his family contacts in Israel, i.e. that all his family is here, his wife, his children, his grandchildren now, are in the United States, so there's no logical reason to transfer him to Israel. Israel, of course, would have accepted him. They would accept any Jewish person who, who, who is a citizen there without any, without any problem. But he didn't reach that far because the U.S. said no. So we have someone who is being discriminated against. He's an Israeli citizen, but he can't go back to Israel under transfer, and he's not entitled to a whole bunch of wonderful uh, programming, and it benefits if he is a U.S. citizen. It would make a big difference. He would be eligible to get out sooner. He would be able to be with his family much more, too. Now, the worst thing that happens is at the end of his sentence, under the present situation, he will be deported to Israel. It makes no difference that everyone is here, that everybody is a U.S. citizen. He would be sent back to Israel to live there and never be able to come back to the United States to see his family. He, he's very concerned about his family, how, how the deportation on him is going to affect his family and his spouse most significantly. So therefore, we started working on getting back his green card so he can stay here. He went to an ICE judge to get back his green card. Everybody was very excited. The lawyers, everybody was very comfortable that he will get back his citizenship. But by the end, everybody was surprised. The judge on the case resigned. A new judge came in and unfortunately, he ruled that Mordecha Samet shouldn't get back his green card. I, I think it's the first time I've ever had where an immigration judge hears an entire case from the beginning until the end and then right before he's about to make his written decision he decides to leave the bench. So Mr. Samet now is being punished twice. On the one hand our country says you can't go to Israel because your family lives here in the United States but on the other hand you can't benefit from the First Step Act because you need to be deported back to Israel. So we're like, send him back to Israel now. Let him go on untreated chance. So no, because his family lives here. What's happening now is that Mordechai Samet is stuck in a technical problem. He's falling between the two chairs. He's not being considered an alien, and he's not being considered a citizen. Mordechai Samet did a mistake. He feels very bad about it, and he's writing now letters and telling people they should be careful with the law, and they should respect the law. A lot of former U.S. attorney and prosecutors who are now reviewing the case are saying this case was a little bit outrageous. I think it's also very telling that the victims themselves in this case have written letters that they agree that he has sat enough time. So it seems pretty unfair, particularly for someone who has spent such a long time in prison and for someone for whom all of the victims have been fully paid back. 27 years is an absurd amount of time. This father has to come home already. How long is this? The Samet family have suffered so much, and now there's, Baruch Hashem, some opportunities on the table. And we like to ask everybody who can help out, should please come and help. We have to do everything in the world to see this father home for his wife and the children. It's enough is enough. The Jewish Fuyan does not relate to a group. 
it relates to one person, to every individual. And that's what they do. That's what the Moshe Margaretins and the Tzvi Boyarskis and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Israel and the Jewish community in the United States and around the world does. There is no question about it that there's a real opportunity for Pigeon Shvuyim over here. There's a real opportunity for Mr. Samet to be reunited with his family. And we are dedicated to getting to that goal. And we're asking the community to garner any support that they can, any chizik that they can, to help us reach that ultimate goal of Mr. Samet coming home to his family where he belongs.